the way down over his ears. Some hair is going day, to show. December 8th, he was sentenced in the year 1976. 46 years ago, Virgin Presnell was sentenced to death for the murder. Hello and welcome again to the Death Row and Executions channel. I'm Paco Rivera. After being put on hold several times over the years, the delays caused by the legality of whether a religious or spiritual advisor may be present beside the condemned inmate being executed, the next scheduled execution to take place will be John Henry Ramirez in the state of Texas on October the 5th. In the year 2004, John Ramirez, who was still just 19 years old at the time, but he would turn 20 about 20 days later, was accompanied by two women accomplices. Ramirez stabbed to death a convenience store clerk named Pablo Castro, stabbing him 29 times. John Ramirez is a former United States Marine. Unfortunately, after leaving the military, it is said that he fell upon hard times and turned to drugs, which he became uh, heavily addicted to. On July 19, 2004, Pablo Castro was working the evening shift at the Times Market convenience store in Corpus Christi, Texas. It was almost closing time, close to midnight. As Castro was taking out the trash to a dumpster outside, he was approached by John Ramirez holding a knife and there was a woman beside him. Another woman had remained in the van as a driver. Ramirez stabbed Pablo Castro to death, searched his pockets, and ran off with $1.25. A customer later entered the store and told the manager, who was closing out the register, that there is a man on the ground outside who is bleeding. The manager went outside to have a look, but she didn't know that it was her employee, Pablo Castro. She went back inside the store and called 911. After going back outside a second time, she saw that it was Pablo and began screaming. Some people that were at a nearby car wash that had gathered on the scene tried their best to calm her down. They told her that Castro was dead. Pablo Castro, who was only 46 years old, had died immediately. One of those individuals that walked over from the car wash was a witness to what happened. A man named Mariano Cervantes later testified in court that while at the car wash, he saw what looked like a fight taking place at the Times Market between a young man and an older man, with a woman standing there as well. Cervantes said that he and a friend then walked over to see if they could help the older man that was being attacked. Mariano Cervantes also said that he then recognized the younger man. He knows him because they had gone to school together. But as he got closer, both John Ramirez and the woman got into separate vans and quickly drove off. The two women, Angela Rodriguez and Christina were arrested that same night, but John Ramirez had escaped to Mexico. He was arrested four years later in 2008 when he was captured near the border. Angela Rodriguez and Christina did not live in Corpus Christi. They, they lived in San Antonio. They had gone to Corpus Christi several days earlier for a visit to Angela Rodriguez's family. John Ramirez and the two women had reportedly met up during that time. They had been drinking and doing drugs together for the previous three or four days until they ran out of money and set out on the night of the 19th of July to rob someone. After killing Pablo Castro and netting only $1.25, the, the three of them then attempted another robbery, but were spotted by police and a chase ensued. Police reported speeds at well over 70 miles per hour during that pursuit. The two women were captured, but John Ramirez bailed out of the vehicle and escaped. As John Henry Ramirez attacked Pablo Castro, he had apparently cut himself several times, including a fairly deep gash to his hand, leaving quite a bit of his own blood on the scene that was proven forensically by DNA testing to be his blood. The two women were convicted in 2006, two years after the murder. 
Christina Chavez was convicted of three counts of aggravated robbery and was sentenced to 25 years in jail. Angela Rodriguez was convicted of two counts of aggravated robbery and one count of murder since she was present at the moment that Mr. Castro was being killed. She was sentenced to life in prison but will be eligible for parole in the year 2035. Here is one story told by John Henry Ramirez about what happened that night. Yo siempre decía que que sí maté al Pablo Castro, you know what I mean? Uh, lo que sí estoy diciendo que no lo estaba no lo estaba robando porque eso es cierto, you know what I mean? No lo estaba robando y no, no mataba peleando, you know? No más era una una pelea, pero Pues yo estaba, yo estaba en el estacionamiento de la tienda. Acabamos de meter ahí, compramos unos cigarros, quién sabe qué, unos chips y quién sabe qué. Otro, uh, una de las camaradas se fue al baño y luego salimos y yo estaba en el estacionamiento uh, sentado en, en el cam camioneta con el, uh, con el celular hablando. Y el otro camarada, por cualquier razón, yo todavía no sé qué estaba pasando, pero ella estaba uh, discutiendo con él, con Pablo, ahí en el, en el estacionamiento y comenzó a como cachetearlo y él estaba peleando para atrás y con, yo fui a separarlo y cuando lo separó él me pegó en la boca ¡Pah! y cuando cuando hizo eso comenzamos a pelear y pues nomás me, me pasé ¿no? sí no hay mejor manera de explicarlo nomás me pasé me enojé saqué el cuchillo y lo comencé a, a, a picar y pues me, me pasé ¿no? Ramirez gave this interview in Spanish where he tells the reporter that he was in a car on his cell phone minding his own business when he looked up and saw his friend fighting with Pablo Castro. He says he got out to help his friend and Pablo punched him. That's when he snapped, he says. He told the reporter that he was not there to rob Castro, even though several witnesses observed him sticking his hand into Pablo Castro's pants pocket after Castro was down. One witness had said it was the woman that reached into Castro's pocket, but that's neither here nor there. A whole $1.25 was robbed from Castro as he lay dead that one of the women testified how that money was dropped onto the van's console when they got back inside the van. Also, a son of Pablo Castro has said that his father was one of the kindest and most gentle beings that one could ever meet, and that there is no way in the world that he would have gotten into a fight with anyone or acted in the manner that Ramirez has claimed. Of course, Ramirez can't deny that he killed Pablo Castro. There is overwhelming proof of that. The robbery is what was considered the aggravating circumstance, an element required in Texas for the death penalty. If Ramirez can convince everyone that it wasn't a robbery, Texas can't execute him. Life without parole would be the, uh, the most they can do. So he has insisted that it wasn't a robbery, of course. Aside from one of the women accomplices testifying that Ramirez dropped $1.25 onto the van's console, the manager of the convenience store also testified that she bought dinner for her employee, Pablo Castro, that night because he had told her that he only had a dollar and some change on him. That money was no longer in his pocket after he was killed. If you would like to see more of these death row stories, please subscribe so that you are alerted when the next one comes up. I'm Paco Rivera. Bye for now.